Firefighters in the U.S. are racing to contain over 100 active fires in the country's west. The so-called Park Fire, the largest in California this year, doubled in size over the weekend, scorching an area bigger than the city of Los Angeles. Firefighters have been working in milder temperatures and higher humidity, but the blaze continues to grow. So far, it's destroyed more than 100 structures and forced thousands of people to flee their homes. Well, earlier, I spoke to Tori Norville. She's a fire science advisor at the University of California Agriculture and Natural Resources. She observes and researches wildfires in the western U.S. I asked her what's so different about this year's wildfires compared to previous ones. We did have significant more rain. Um, the past two years, we've had more rain, uh, which helps promote the growth of vegetation um, that can dry out later in the year. This year, though, what we did see that's different from last year is that we had um, more hot and dry weather start in June, whereas last year we had cooler weather in June. Um, the month of July this year, we had a heat dome sitting over California, uh, and this really just made the conditions out on the landscape hot and dry and really made all the vegetation very receptive to um, fire ignitions, both uh, human-caused and through lightning. Um, hmm. We've heard in the past that these kind of wildfires uh, often are connected with poor forest management. To what extent is that still true? So I do want to stress that fire is a natural part of the ecosystem in California, and many of these ecosystems need fire, so we can't necessarily remove fire from the ecosystems. But forest management is an important factor. Um, past land practices, along with the absence of fire over the last hundred years, has really created these receptive uh, conditions to larger, uh, these larger scale fires. Um, however, in these fire affected areas, there are really good projects that have been going on throughout um, the fire footprints and throughout the state that include forest thinning, shaded fuel breaks, uh, fuel reduction projects, and prescribed fires that have allowed these areas to fare better. Um, there's a researcher, Zeke Lunder, who's been doing some good coverage on the park fire in Butte County. Um, and he found that areas that had treatments were burning at lower severities than and other areas that don't have treatments. Um, and this is what we want. We want our forest treatments to um, not necessarily stop the fires from occurring, but to reduce the severity and create opportunities for firefighters to do their jobs. Um, sometimes we just have weather and topography that work against us and have situations like what we're seeing in Butte County. Speaking of the weather, we often talk about climate, climate change. Can we say to what extent it's an increasing factor in the severity or frequency of forest fires? So climate change is impacting the wildfires. Um, probably throughout the last decade, we've been seeing um, fire seasons move into November, December, January, um, where in the past they would typically stop in maybe late no, late October, early November. Um, we're seeing a change in weather patterns, just more extended drought. Um, we talked about the heat dome that sat over California this month. Um, so it is affecting wildfires. It's also affecting some of the um, forest pests that we have going on in the western half of the United States. Um, because of shorter winters, we're seeing an increase in life cycles of bark beetles, which can um, then increase the amount of dead trees and can fuel those wildfires as well. To what extent can fire scientists like yourself and firefighters who have to respond to these events, to what extent can they learn from what's been happening over the past decade? And as these fires increase as they sort of change their scope, in part because of climate change, to what extent can they learn and adapt? Yeah, so researchers like myself and just firefighters in general, we are um, trained to learn and adapt and become resilient to wildfires. Um, resiliency is a very complex topic, uh, especially when you start talking about um, forest resiliency. But, um, we don't necessarily, like I said before, take out fire from these ecosystems, but rather we want to be able to allow the re ecosystems to recover and maintain function over time. So communities can start adapting and implementing measures um, such as home hardening or structure hardening. And this is just where you um, implement 
uh, like a new roof or double paned windows or change out vents in order to prevent embers and ignitions from starting a house fire. Um, homeowners can perform defensible space around their houses. Um, and this is just trying to uh, eliminate pathways from uh, maybe the forest to a home um, and prevent embers in that sense. And then when we look at the ecosystem or the landscape scale, um, implementing these fuel reduction projects, uh, strategically placed shaded fuel breaks, um, and just forest management practices can all help together to build resiliency for um, communities and allow firefighters to do their job. Um, yeah. All right, that's Fire Science Advisor Tori Norville in Santa Rosa, California. Thank you very much. Thank you.